I first came to the Middle East in 1979, and that was actually to the Sultanate of Oman. I spent 10 years in the Sultanate, and then I've been here in uh, <laughs> the United Arab Emirates, but based in Abu Dhabi for the past 27 years. Of course, going back a bit in, in my earlier career in Europe, in, well, mainly in Ireland and UK, I was a steeplechase rider, rode uh, jump, jump riding, jump racing, many, and I also rode the winner of the English Grand National, which is considered the biggest uh, steeplechase in the world. But it's so long ago now, a lot of people don't even remember it. <laughs> Actually in 1963, which is uh, 50, 53 years ago, which it, it seems a long, long time, but it's uh, fresh in my memory. And it did me a fair bit of good in my career, because I was only 19 years old at that time. And it, it put me, uh, I won't say on the forefront of every trainer or owner, but it, it certainly made them aware of who Pat Buckley was. Of course, during the latter end of my period in, in Oman, we started golf racing, which I was instrumental in being uh, the professional, if you like. We went to Saudi, we went to Bahrain, we went to Qatar, Kuwait and Iraq. But unfortunately, there was nothing of the United Arab Emirates. There was no representation. And I got in touch with a few people here uh, who worked for His Highness Sheikh Zayed. Uh, Colonel Tug Wilson, who was a very famous character here in the very early days. He was actually His Highness Sheikh Zayed's bodyguard when uh, he was in the forces. And he said, yeah, we have rod stables here and that, we have a few ponies, but we want to get the racing going. And we invited them down to Oman for a race meeting and they brought some horses and they said, this is marvellous. Can we not do the same in the United Arab Emirates? And I said, well, I'd love to. And, and I came here to um, um, Abu Dhabi and I've been here. I came in uh, 1990, I came to visit one hot June day, which is about a similar time to this moment that we're talking. And believe it or not, I walked the track, the horse, there was a little green grass race course here, you know. And I walked around there and came back in, of course, with my shirt, I was lathered and anyway. <laughs> and it wasn't Ramadan, so luckily I was able to partake of uh, vital requirements like water, you know, gallons of it. But anyway, they, they cut a long story short again, then I said yes, I would come here for three years. And here, 27 years later, I'm still here. We got things going and under the great help of His Highness Sheikh Zayed and of course Sheikh Mansour and Sheikh Haza, we had our first race meeting here, just end of October, November 1991. We didn't have a ruling body here, we didn't have any rules or regulations, so Along with several other people, and I shall name them, one was uh, Dhruba Salvaratnam, who was still in charge of the Jabal Ali stables of Sheikh Rashid, Sheikh Ahmed bin Rashid Al Maktoum. And then there was uh, Bill Mather, who was working for Sheikh Maktoum, the late Sheikh Maktoum in Dubai. And there was a uh, poor guy, long gone now, Samir Abbas, who was in uh, charge. And we actually got together uh, and we tried to produce a rule book which we did, based. the very first thing I introduced was dope testing. Now it had no legal standing whatsoever, but it meant that we tested the winner of each race, we took a blood test. Nowadays it's all very sophisticated, it's blood tests and urine tests and all sorts of tests, but in those days it was myself and uh, Dr. Thomas, who used to work at the Rod Stables, we went after the race to the trainer's yard and we took the blood in a syringe from the horse's neck. Of course we had the passports and things, horse's ID, and we had to confirm that each horse matched his description on the passport, for instance, and this would be done before the horse took part in any race. I was taken to meet His Highness, Sheikh Zayed, one day in the palace, which is very near here, Al, Al, Al Mushraf Palace, which is at our entrance into the Abu Dhabi Equestrian Club, and I met him and two of his other members of, of his uh, uh, entourage. And we had a good chat and he said, you're going to make racing very, very good here. And I said, yes, your highness. And I said, there's only one thing that will stop me. And he said, what is that? And I said, well, lack of the necessary, the money. Anyway, he conferred with his other two uh, gentlemen and uh, he said, well, that will not be any problem here for you. <laughs> and then we had a club, uh, we formed a club with Sheikh Hazar, Sheikh Mansour, Sheikh Fala. Now, uh, I was working with Sheikh Mansour and Sheikh Hazar here and Sheikh Tanoon inside. Now, Sheikh Tanoon was one of the prime movers in starting to bring the horses from the States. And of course, uh, a bit later on, we got the great, the most famous of all, Unchained Melody, the mighty Alan Oud, who was beaten once in 33 races. She was one of our most famous 
racehorses and has become a very famous broodmare mother of, of racing probably and grandmother even now because I'm going back a few years. But uh, those horses came and um, their dynasty still goes on because looking in any pedigree of, uh, on a race book you'll find horses relating back, back and back to these horses. Now establishing once I was accepted by their highnesses the local owners, of which there weren't that many in those days, a few of the businessmen and that kind of thing, but they accepted me, thank God, and, and to make it successful, not to go and have something fall down halfway through. And Alhamdulillah, as we say, 20 odd years later, we have established a very, very uh, firm and, uh, well, it's internationally recognized now. It's, uh, you look at the, the, the UAE, horse racing industry we have uh, well, we're known all over the world thanks more recently to His Highness Sheikh Mansour bin Zayed now in the first Ramadan here I was here it was in, it would have been in uh, perhaps November time but in those days we used to start racing after start racing at nine o'clock at night we were lucky to have the floodlights you see but we used to race it in Dubai at nine o'clock at night and um, which wasn't great because, okay, we had a great night, but we did have to be up next morning again at seven o'clock, you know, so we got home usually around about ooh, one o'clock, two o'clock from Dubai, you know. And in those days, of course, the roads weren't nearly as good as they are at the present moment. But down here nowadays is, uh, well, it starts so early in the morning, the, the man, and then we go through the day to the Iftar. See, in Dubai, um, one of the uh, religious muftis was suggesting that the guys who lived in the top of the Burj Al Arab Tower had to observe their, <laughs> their fasting that about a few seconds longer because they saw the sun for longer than the guys in the bottom floor. <laughs> Whether that I mean, even we went to Hollywood for a presentation there, the Darley Awards, which is run also by His Highness Sheikh Mansour, and of course, Laura Sawaya, who is the manageress uh, supreme uh, that was arranged there in Hollywood. And we went to Santa Anita races. And lo and behold, we were watching a race and I felt a hand on my shoulder, I thought I was being arrested for something. And I looked and there was one of our famous jockeys who used to be here, Carlos Arias, who used to ride the almighty Alan Hood in her racing days here, you know. And there I meet him, what, 20 years later, hale and hearty, you know, and remembering all the fun that we had here in, in the early days, you know. Because it was fun, it was more fun, I'd have to say, it's more of an industry now, there's little doubt about it. But we used to have some great fun, you know, great fun. I miss those days. Well, having been here all those years and seen so many different generations of, of personalities pass through, coming and going and gone, in fact, some of them in quite a few have uh, uh, passed out from this life. And it's amazing the number of people that have, um, including, of course, my, oh, His Highness Sheikh Zayed bin Sultan. In my lifetime, he's gone. Sheikh Maktoum, Al Maktoum from Dubai, he's gone, you know? And um, we'll all go someday. But uh, I'd like to say that um, the industry, the life I've had here in the United Arab Emirates, mainly in Abu Dhabi, because it's been my home now for, well, <laughs> too long. And people say to you, when, when are you thinking of going home? And I say, well, where is home? Well, where, is, where do you come from? I said, I come from Abu Dhabi. I mean, that's a simple matter, you know, I've been here and I hope I've established myself as uh, fairly honest and trustworthy and uh, I'd rather think if I wasn't, I'd have been gone, you know, longer. But I love it here and I hope to stay for as, well, as long as God allows me. During my stay in the Middle East, I've met some very notable personalities and the outstanding one, of course, has to be His Highness, the late President Sheikh Zayed bin Sultan al Nahyan. He was an absolute gentleman. The way he looked after his own people, uh, passionately, with a love that not many people would show. And to me, to myself, I mean, he was the, well, the instigator, if you like, or the predominant factor in getting racing off the here because when I established the very first race meeting here in November I think it was 1991 a lot of people looked skeptically at me and said you will be for it if it doesn't work what will his highness say well anyway cut a long story short it did work but the most important thing was that his highness was here the president Sheikh Zayed and he made the presentation to the winning owners and trainers and that really 
establish racing because if it's good enough for his highness it's good enough for us and our next race meeting with cars parked almost down to airport road people trying to come because his highness is going to be here again and um, i'd like to say thank you to the president i never saw him in latter years of course but uh, he was always there he always born he used to get messages through sheikh haza sheikh mansoor and sheikh tanoon and i've got to appreciate everything that the president, late president, and his most beautiful, marvellous sons, Mansoor, Hazat and Tanoon, have helped me and my family over the years. Mm -hmm.